In this video, we'll talk about pain in the hand area and how can we differentiate different types of arthralgia based on the location as well as some other disease that can cause pain in the hand. So if we have here the hand drawing, you can point that in the distal area in the hand, which is the distal interpharyngeal joints. Usually when the patient comes with pain in that area, you have to think about two main differential, osteoarthritis and psoriatic arthritis. While if the patient comes with pain and arthralgia more approximately, which is in the proximal interpharyngeal joints as well as in the metacarpophalangeal joints, then you have to think about two most important differentials which are rheumatoid arthritis and hemochromatosis. Now, to be more specific, if you want to number each metacarpopharyngeal joint, then you have to think about the second and the third metacarpopharyngeal joints as most commonly associated with the hemochromatosis. And they usually give this in the question to help you figure out the diagnosis. Now, what about the wrist area here? So, in this area, we have three main differentials. Rheumatoid arthritis, pseudogout as well, and one important one is carpal tunnel syndrome. Let's talk about carpal tunnel syndrome a little bit. So, they present with paresthesia, and the cause is, as we all know, is median nerve compression. And median nerve has two branches. One is motor, and the other one is sensory and it will involve the lateral three digits. The sensory branch is the one that's only involved. So that's why it's very unusual in these patients to have weakness. Now remember two important physical signs. The patient, if you tap on their wrist area, they will have pain and that is called tinnel sign, which is present in around 95% of the patients. It's not specific but it is sensitive. While if you ask the patient to make wrist flexion on both of the hands and put them against each other, then this sign is called Fallon sign and this has more specificity, around 80%, but also around 90% sensitivity. And these signs can help you differentiate carpal tunnel syndrome from other causes of wrist pain. Now this very important signs because in the clinical practice, when you see a patient with wrist pain, you might want to try these physical exam findings and see if they are positive and that will help you with the diagnosis. Why? Because carpal tunnel syndrome is mainly clinical diagnosis. You don't have to do any other tests to confirm. And they might ask you, do you need to do any nerve conduction studies or EMG for diagnosis confirmation? And the answer is no. Now, one important thing to know about carpal tunnel syndrome, NSA don't work in these patients. They have no proof that they work. So don't pick this answer nor prescribe it to your patients. Then how you manage, you need to look for the cause and usual association or causes are diabetes and hypothyroidism, which if you control them better, you will have better symptoms control of the rest as well. In the meantime, you can give them like splinting or ask them to do physical therapy, occupational therapy, show them some videos and exercises that can help. Now, if that fails, then you can do steroid injections. And if all of the above fails, then you need to refer them to surgery. Since we are going to do surgery now, clinical diagnosis cannot be only reason for that. We have to do nerve conduction study to better localize the nerve pain and confirm our diagnosis. And the last area I want to mention here is going to be the lateral thumb and the lateral area of the wrist as well. And here we're talking about decurve vein syndrome or tenosynovitis. Now, you don't need to know the muscles involved, but they are extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. It's a clinical diagnosis, so you have to remember like two important signs at least. So ulnar deviation can worsen the pain as well as what we call Finkelstein sign where you ask the patient to put their thumb in the wrist and also make an ulnar deviation. This will exacerbate their pain. Now, NSAIDs here can help 
compared to carpal tunnel syndrome. And if that fails, then you can do steroid injection. And if all fails, then you can refer them for surgery. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys learned something. See you in the next one.